Armax Billiards in the Federal Hotel proudly presents Bob Marshall Billiards, starring World Billiards Grandmaster, Mr. Bob Marshall. I've been asked uh, on many occasions all around Australia and even overseas to make this video, and now we're going to try to do it. I, I propose uh, at the start to show you stands, bridge, queuing, and then go into all the key shots and the various departments like top of the table, nursery cannons, as we go along. But first of all, we'll start off with my stance, showing you my stance. Although now I've got the chalk in my hand, I'll show you chalking a cue. Now you just simply run the chalk around on the, like that, so you chalk the edge of the tip and then just wipe the chalk over like that. You don't have to screw the chalk right into the, uh, the cue right into the chalk and make a great hole because a lot of players do this in clubs and that, and they eventually pull the tips off their cues. Now, making a bridge, uh, my hand, I always place my hand flat down on the table and then draw it up like that, the same as the stays in a roof, and then run my cue right along there where the fleshy part of your uh, first finger index finger and your bridge is nice and tight. The idea being that you don't want to run the cue back here where in the hot weather it'll stick. You want to, to run it over there so you put your index finger well out like that and so the cue can run along nice and easily like that. Now then my, my stance, my, my feet, anyone my height you want to be about 18 inches apart, and you more or less stand uh, like a fighter, more a side onto the table, and th then you lay back in a type of a lunge position. My right leg is always stiff. My front leg is often bent, various shots I play, but you lay back in a comfortable position so that you take the weight off your arms and it's on your legs. Then you get well down over the cue. The next thing is to get right down over the queue and sight right down along the queue exactly the way you would do along the barrel of a gun. All the old players like Melbourne Inman, Tom Reese and, and all those types of players of the last century, they all played standing up in the air like this. And to my way of thinking, that is like firing a Tommy gun from the hip. You can't be as accurate firing a tonic, tommy gun from the hip as you can by sighting down the, the, the cue like, a, like as if it's a rifle. You must be more accurate doing it that way. Now, at this stage, I'd like to give everyone an idea of what is the standard cue for them. Now, you want about nine inches of cue from this point of the bridge to the ball and then your wrist right under your elbow at the back, your wrist right under your elbow, and when you get foot, your left arm or the forward arm, whether you're a left or right handed, uh, get, get fully extended, and then you get right down over the cue like this and, and sight it up, same as the gun. Now, all you want left is about an inch or inch and a half. If you find that your back grip is, is well up the cue like that, you want to take all that length, that much, with the exception of an inch or an inch and a half, off the forward end of the cue there, replace the ferrule and, and the, the tip, and this is the, the length of the cue that everyone needs. Some people see a longer in the arm than others, therefore they'll need a longer cue. But you want to be as compact as you can be, as compact. What get or, or I like to shorten up my bridge and sneak up on the ball if I want to be accurate on shots. Now, the next thing is your back grip. I have my thumb over my index finger and the remaining fingers are on the cue quite tight, the same as you would do holding a, a hammer, the hammer the nails into a fence or anything like that, you hold it quite firm. But as you come back, there's a lot of wrist movement in billiards. As you come back, your hand, your fingers are 
loosely on the cue, with the exception of your forefinger and thumb, and as you come forward and contact the ball, it's tight like that, very tight. You never want to have a loose grip. A lot of people advocate holding the, the cue loosely like that. You'll have a better touch. Now, that's a lot of hooey. You don't want to take any notice of that, whatever. Uh, out all the natural angles here. The red ball is 12 and 3 quarter inches out from the face of the cushion. And just where the ball turns into the pocket here, anywhere along that line that I've marked to the red spot, is a natural angle in off in that pocket. The same thing would apply with a ball from here, would be a natural angle in off from here. And the same down here in these two pockets are natural angles in off there. I'll just show you this one now. It's a natural angle or half ball in off. Right now, here's the natural angle in off into the top pocket there. I'll show you that one again and try to explain to you what a natural angle is. A natural angle shot is a half ball shot and you're down addressing your ball at 12 o'clock and you're pointing your cue right at the very edge of that red ball. So if I take the white ball up from here, right up to the red ball, there it is, 12 o'clock, and pointed at the edge of that red. So that half the white ball is striking half the red ball. Half the white, and that's why it's called a half ball shot or a natural angle in off. And, and you simply have to point your cue at the edge of the red and follow through like that. The main thing to remember, really, is to hit it strong enough to leave that red ball in a nice, easy position up here so you can score the next shot. Now, in a situation like this, I've showed you all the natural angles. Now, you have to use those the whole time if you want to make the game easy. Billiards is a game of easy shots, and if you're not playing them like that, you're not playing billiards. So you have to use these angles. In this case, you pop the red ball, and the white ball will strike the cushion and come off onto that natural angle. The next shot, the reds come back onto the spot, and I'll play the half ball, natural angle in off, into that pocket, bringing the red ball up the table. And as you can see, I'm a little bit off the natural angle in off the red. So now I have to use a little bit of right hand side and I'm coming over from the center of the ball over a half an inch to put right hand side on. Now I'll come and, and to get that, hit, strike this ball as I want to, I have to point my cue a half an inch inside the left hand side of the red so that the right hand side I'm putting on this ball will pull it in off this jaw here into that pocket. And this is how you play it. Now this time, the white ball has come off the cushion and it's made the angle a bit wide for in off the red. So instead of I'll show you how to aim. Instead of aiming now at the, at the center of the ball up here and at the edge of the red, I'm coming over a half an inch on my white ball or the cue ball, and I'm aiming now a half an inch outside the red because I'm wanting a bit of right-hand side so to pull the white ball over into that pocket. And I'll address, address the ball now like that, a half an inch outside, and pull it over into the pocket. I'm going to show you a little bit different shot. I showed you how when the ball came off the cushion for the natural angle, and it was a bit narrow, plus when it was a bit wide. Now you can use a little bit of running side up to about two or three inches, and you'll, the side will take. But when it gets very wide, like that, no side will 
take it. So you've got to play a true balk and you play a double strength shot very hard. Aim your ball back like I showed you for the natural angle, right top here, 12 o'clock, and point it at the edge of the red ball, but play a double strength, red cushion there, back through the ball, down the table, and swing the white into that pocket. And this is how you play it. to give you an idea of, of what, what happens with this swing shot. Once this ball strike, strikes the red, you wouldn't think it was possible there to go around that white ball into the pocket. But what happens in a swing shot, when this ball strikes the red, it comes out like that and goes around into the pocket. Now, we'll play this for you so you can see it. What I'm going to do now is use this same swing shot in different positions to let you see that it can be used in lots of various positions. This is one where, with the, in the middle pocket. It's a little bit wide, and the average player would think he'd have to screw the ball over or something like that. Now, all he's got to do is play a half ball shot and top this ball at 12 o'clock and play at double strength, swing the ball around, mm -hmm straight into the open pocket. With the ball in this position, and instead of trying to screw that distance with a little bit wide, it play the same thing, half ball shot here, 12 o'clock here, and fo follow through and play at double strength. You simply swing the cue ball around, it goes straight into the pocket. Now we're playing against the nap ball, nap here, but because it's wide and I'm playing it fast at double strength, you don't have to worry about side. You simply play it exactly the same as the other shots, striking a ball 12 o'clock, aiming at the edge of the red and playing at double strength. I've showed you all the natural angles where you strike the ball a half ball. Now this is the same thing, playing the red ball from the center of the table into these four pockets. This is the backbone of the game, backbone of billiards, and uh, I'll play a few just to show you what you've got to do. Uh, you set up your shot. Uh, incidentally, playing the natural angles helps to train your eye to what is a natural angle, so that when you're back in hand, and you place the ball in the D, you can put the ball on what you think is the natural angle. This is very important to train your eye to what is a natural angle. Now I'm going to play in off this red ball, ordinary half ball shot into that pocket, drive the red ball onto the right hand side cushion, top cushion, left hand uh, cushion here, back up the table. Now, all you have to do is exactly the same as the other shots that I've showed you. You point your cue at the edge of that red ball, top your ball here at 12 o'clock, high bridge, backhand well down, and follow through. Billiards is very much like golf in that respect. You have to follow through. I brought the red ball back right up the centre of the table here so that I can score in the centre pockets here, bringing the red ball up the centre of the table all the time. This is very important and the backbone of the game because you can make quite a lot of, uh, or quite a high break off the one ball, but you're limited in, because you're only allowed 15 winning or losing hazards off the red ball, so this is why you have to go on to top of the table and cannons. Now, if you've played these angle shots, which I've shown you, it helps to train your eye to what is a natural angle. Because when you're back in hand with the, with the cue ball, you have to be able to put this ball on whatever you think is a natural angle. So it's important to 
get your eye trained to the natural angle shot. Now we'll play this one, ordinary, a half ball shot, pointing your cue at the edge of that red, 12 o'clock onto the white, high bridge, backhand well down, and follow through. Ladies and gentlemen, there are quite a number of small shots, little shots, that I feel is incorporated in all-round billiards. Uh, and I'd like to show you those before we go on to the top of the table. Now, this shot is what they call a short jenny into the centre pocket. Now, uh, we're seeing that we're only using one camera for this video, we're going to take it from uh, two different angles to let you see what's happening. Now, the, what you do first of all, you work out what is the natural angle in, in off in that pocket there. Then you move your white ball over about an inch so to allow for the spin. You've got to uh, sort of come down on the ball. I'm going to strike the ball at seven o'clock and raise my backhand slightly so that uh, I can give it a bit of a spin to pull it into the pocket. And this is how we play it. And what we've done now is simply change to the other side of the table. We're playing it on the right-hand side now. Now, I'm aiming now at the white ball at five o'clock. Five o'clock and slightly raise my back hand. It's one of the few shots that I raise my back hand at all. I always like to keep the back hand down and just clear the cushion. But this one, I raise it slightly. Now, this time, I'm going to play what they call a long jenny, when the red ball is just below the centre pocket. Now, we're playing it on the left-hand side of the table, and I'm going to strike the ball at 7 o'clock again, the same as I did for the short jenny. Now, we're giving you a second shot at this long jenny because of have only got the one camera and we're going off down there. Striking my ball here at seven o'clock. I'm going to show you a few in off the whites. Uh, run through on that. I showed you how you can run through the ball. You have to top the ball to run through. Now in a case like this, uh, to run through in off that white, you have to strike the opponent's ball a little bit to the right off centre and come on with your own ball, striking your ball at 10 o'clock and topping it. Keep your backhand well down, a high bridge, and, and run through. In this case, your opponent's ball is straight onto the pocket. You can get in off it. What you do you fire your opponent's ball onto that jaw just there so that it hits that jaw, then that jaw, and runs up the table, and you run on with a lot of left hand top side, contacting your ball at 10 o'clock and following through to make the end off. It looks impossible to get in off the white. But you can get in off with a kiss in off. What you do, I contact uh, my opponent's ball on the left hand side, driving him onto the cushion about there. I put right hand side contacting my ball at two o'clock so that when it strikes the cushion here, it comes off on an angle there, just striking the opponent's ball for the second time and making the in off. I'm just going to show you a little bit of kiss cannons, how you work them out. Now, first of all, it all starts from a right angle. Now, you have to work out in your mind whether that is a right angle. Now, a, a right angle, all you have to do is point your cue at the edge of that red there to get it a natural right angle shot. Now, you point your cue at the edge of that red there and you'll get a cannon. This time, you'll notice that the angle is much wider than the right angle.
but it all starts with that half ball shot from the right angle. Now, this time, instead of pointing my cue at the edge of that red ball, I point it there about nearly a half an inch outside the red ball. Striking your own ball there down about, about six o'clock and pointing the cue just outside the red ball. We've got a wider angle than a natural uh, right angle and I'm going to now uh, strike my ball here at six o'clock and I'll point my cue a half an inch outside the edge of that, uh, that ball, half an inch outside. So down the bottom there and a half an inch outside and you play it like that. It's the same sort of a shot, it's a kiss cannon and it's almost a right hand, uh, right angle. So I'm gonna aim at my ball at six o'clock and point my cue at the edge of that white ball. I'm now going to play a long run through right down the table to the top pocket down there. Now in doing this, I'm going down the table and I'm going to strike my ball here at two o'clock. High bridge, backhand well down, strike my ball here at two o'clock. And I'm striking the ball here at two o'clock. I'm now going to play a shot against the nap into the uh, ball put left hand top pocket. Uh, the side has the exact opposite effect of coming down the table. I'm going to strike at two o'clock on the right and strike that red ball right in the center and it should cling into the cushion and make the pocket. going to play another shot that would be helpful to all players. The red ball is hard up against the right hand cushion there. Playing from hand, instead of playing a soft shot, I play it very firm, striking my ball at two o'clock and striking the red ball right in the centre and driving it through Bork back again down the table. Um, you need a high bridge for this and the backhand well down and striking that red ball in the center, striking my ball at two o'clock. At this time, I'm going to play a draw shot. You can see where the balls are. I'm going to strike my white ball here at five o'clock and point my cue a little bit to the left off center and draw your cue back smartly and that will bring the white ball back here and the side should pull it into the pocket. Now, I'm going to explain another shot. This is a shot that you probably use at the top of the table when you get a line up in an awkward situation. Now here we've got it lined up. I'm going to get in off the red ball into this pocket. By playing the red ball straight onto the white, it'll take those two balls out of the way and I'll run on and make the pocket. I'm striking my ball at 10 o'clock. We're going to play the same shot on the opposite side of the table so that you can see exactly where I'm striking this ball. You have a high bridge, keep your backhand well down Strike the red right in the middle and strike your ball at two o'clock. I've set up the balls in an awkward position. It's to show you that how you use side going against the nap. It has the reverse effect. The red ball is about three inches out from the cushion. The opponent's ball is right on the balk line. My ball is, or, or the cue ball, is back here near the red spot. Now, I'm going to strike the cushion first and use a lot of right-hand side, striking my ball at five o'clock, and it, or I've struck it on the right, and it'll revolve to the left and hopefully make that cannon.
once again, right hand side, striking a ball at five o'clock. The balls are in a very awkward position here. See where the red ball is just out from the left hand side cushion. The white ball is hard up against the right hand cushion there and you're playing from hand. Now you can get this shot by playing the cushion first. Striking the cushion just before the white, then the white ball, top cushion and the left hand side should take it over to the red. I'm striking my ball at seven o'clock. This is another position where I use the cushion first. I'm going to strike the cushion first in front of the white, knock the white ball towards the red spot or around the red spot, then cushion again after striking the white, then knock the red ball towards the pocket. Now this is how we do it. At five o'clock, on your wristwatch. Another shot or version of the same shot to show you where we're contacting the ball and how they finish up. Now, contacting my ball uh, at five o'clock, cushion first, then the white, cushion again, and then the red. This is the ricochet shot. I'm going to strike my ball at 10 o'clock, uh, striking the, uh, the, the object white ball, about a half ball, so that when you hit the cushion, the side should hug it into the cushion again and make that cannon. Striking my ball at 10 o'clock. just another view of the same shot showing you what happens to the cue ball. I'm contacting the cue ball at 10 o'clock, topping it very well, half ball onto the white ball and when it hits that cushion it should bring it in to make the cannon. Very awkward situation. The red ball is just off the side cushion there out of play and I'm in hand. Now what I'm going to try to do is go in off in the left hand top pocket by striking my ball at seven o'clock and about a third of the red. You gotta have it thin enough uh, to keep the red ball out of ball and be able to draw my ball away from the cushion and making that in off. Just the same shot played again uh, to let you see various aspects of it that you must avoid. You mustn't contact that red too full, otherwise you'll get a double kiss. So you've got to contact it thin enough to miss that. And you contact your ball at seven o'clock with a lot of side on and it should keep that ball going to the left all the way down the cushion. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go on to the top of the table and show you all the different movements down at the top. But before doing so, I, I would like to mention at this stage that anybody that has reached a good standard with a losing hazard game, they should immediately go to the top. Learn the top of the table because that is uh, the fastest scoring medium in billiards with the exception of nursery cannons. But to be able to play top of the table, you must think top of the table. You've got to think about it all the time. How soon I can get down there, the fewer number of shots that you can get to the top, the better. You know full well that once you get to the top, that you'll be able to make some sort of a break. So with that in mind, I'll point out to you now that we have marked the table here uh, with a square. Now, uh, if you can get your opponent's white ball into that square behind the red spot and you keep playing cannons and just brushing the white and pots in either of these pockets, 
you will make a big break. Now, we'll start off like this, with the balls in this position, to give you an idea of what I'm talking about. Uh, the easiest way to get to the top, uh, other than drop cannons, is using the middle pockets. If you've got a ball up there uh, where you can get, it, get in off it, a white ball, you can drop it down into this box. The next thing is to try to get the red ball over the opposite middle pocket so that you can pot that and get down to the top. Now, in this case here, uh, a top of the table player would know full well that if he's back in hand, he could go and off that white and drop it down into the box. So the first thing he would do would be pot that red and bring the white ball off the cushion onto the natural angle there. That would be his first shot. His second shot would be going in off the red ball into this pocket. Then he would have the red ball over that pocket for the third shot. And he'd go in off the white, drop it down there, then pot the red and he'd be down for the top of the table. In a position like this, you should be down to the top in four shots. And this is how you do it. That's the first one. Now, second shot, in off the red. Knock the red over the centre pocket. Now, the third shot, I'll go in off the white from Bork here and drop it down into the box. Now, the fourth shot, you're back in hand. Now, going to pot that red and follow through with the white, hitting the top cushion and come back for your position. Now, you saw Bob potting the red there in the middle, gaining good position to continue his break at top of the table. We'll now pot the red which is three points, and gain perfect position for another cannon. And this shot, Bob will play soft cannon, driving the red towards the pocket. So a soft stun shot there. Another good angle for a cannon. And Bob is very dexterous top of the table player and also plays Excellent postman's knock, which is a different variation of top of the table play. And potting red again for another three points. Now, in that case, um, Bob bounced the white off the cushion driving the red again towards the pocket and once again gaining perfect position. Potting the red and creating another perfect angle to continue the break. Excellent touch by Bob Marshall, one of the biggest grandmasters of the world. I'm sure a lot of billiards boffins out there watching this video would be saying at 82 years of age, I wish I could play like that. And the soft cannon driving the red towards the pocket. The next shot to pot the red and create the angle for another cannon. Now uh, that is the postman's knock position we spoke about before with the white wedged up against the cushion. And Bob has made many big breaks at Postman's Knock. Including f um, four 1,000 breaks. There's not too many people who can say they've made 1,000 breaks in billiards. Top of the table, Postman's Knock, the white wedged up against the cushion potting red to create another angle. You'll notice the cross marked on the table 
where Bob strives to get the perfect angle for his next cannon. And there it is, top of the table, played by one of the grandmasters. Excellent control there by Bob, and um, depending on the angle that he gets will determine whether or not he needs running or check side to get the uh, cannon in the postman's knock. Putting the red at another perfect angle going to cannon once more. No, Bob didn't play the cannon. He chose to pot the red and go around the angles for his next cannon. And that's the strength and beauty of Bob's um, billiards, and that is his recovery shots. He has a tremendous array of shots. When he loses position, uh, Bob is never flustered. He knows what to do and how to get out of it, and he just keeps pulling shots out of the bag and keeps the brakes going. Tremendous control by Bob Marshall. Same shot as before in reverse. He potted the red, went off the cushion to get angle for a cannon once more. And Bob has elected to sort of keep the white uh, wedged up against the cushion. Other top of the table practitioners might decide to knock the white out. And um, as Bob said before, never get flustered, there's always shots on. up as Bob demonstrates his wizardry and knowledge of billiards. Now for those of you who don't know, Bob has won four amateur world titles. He has won 21 Australian amateur titles and is still undefeated in the WA amateur billiards title. And as said earlier, he has made four breaks in excess of 1,000, which is excellent billiards. Many of the shots you see Bob playing now, the shots that he learned from the legendary late great Walter Lindrum. Now, I've showed you a little bit of floating white and a bit of postman's knock. Now, uh, once you've got the white ball, your opponent's white ball, in that box there, if it happens to fall right behind the, the red and you decide that you'll play some postman's knock, don't be in a hurry to push the white ball back there. Just play a few little cannons and pots, little cannons and pots until you push it right back to the cushion, like this.
Now, I've, I've showed a bit of uh, floating white and postman's knock. Now, there are a lot of variations around here, and I'll try to show you a few of those now. If the white ball happens to get straight behind the red, and you feel as if you'd like to move it to the cushion there for postman's knock, just take it quietly, push it down uh, in, in a two or three cannons, just play it soft like that, just push it back slightly, come off the cushion again, Now we push it back just a bit more and you don't, don't be in a hurry to get it back. Now this time I haven't come up quite far enough so I'm going to pot the red, hit the top cushion and come back for the shot by using a little bit of check side, striking my ball at 10 o'clock. Now I came just a little bit wide and, and struck the white, which sport my position here with the cue ball. But it's still all right. The, the red is uh, on a slight angle, so that I can pot it and strike my ball at six o'clock here and draw it back about six inches. And now you've got your position now for your postman's knock. Played it with a little bit of check side and you finish up carrying on from there. Now, we'll show you a little bit of other variations. If the red ball happens to get almost straight on in a position like this, uh, the, I, I'm, I put a little dotted line straight in line with the red spot each side of the table. Now, if you can get your cue ball on there and then just play a dribble pot the next shot, you'll be in perfect position. I'll show you but, but this one. Now that's the pot. Now just dribble the red through softly, no side at all, and you'll be right in line for a nice cannon next shot. Now this is another position that naturally crops up with in all billiard games, but the average player or all-round player would think, well, now I just pot that red, that's beautiful, right over the pocket. But a top-of-the-table player wants to get this ball back, his, his, uh, his opponent's white ball, back into this box because he knows this is where he makes the breaks. So what you do is just clip this red very fine and it'll hit the cushion there and this jaw and it'll stay around the pocket and come back with a little bit of check side striking your ball at about nine o'clock and come back and knock that white ball back into the box like this. Now I haven't got it back quite as far as I wanted to but it's on its way. Now all I've got to do is pop that red, come off here play a cannon off that white ball and I've got it back into the box. I put that red, put it up on the spot and play a cannon now off the white. And we've got it back in, in the box. Now this is another variation uh, where the, you can see where the balls are there. Now you've got to know when to go away from the top of the table a bit as well, although thick top of the table the whole time. Now in this case, I would 
fire the white ball onto the cushion about here so that it would come off there so that I could go in off it when, from balk when I get back to balk. Strike the red ball a little bit on the right hand side so that I can put it in that pocket next shot. Then it would be a matter of putting the red, going off here, knock it over the centre pocket, going off the white, drop it back into the box, back in hand, pop the red and you're back down the top of the table. Now that would be your first shot, and this would be your next one, and just come off the cushion onto your angle, then the red ball comes up on the spot, like that there. Now we're going off the red ball, which I've done for you before, in off there, knock it over the centre pocket, back in hand, in off the white, knock it into the box, back in hand, put the red there, down here, and you've got top of the table. Now this is another little variation. The white ball has got out of the box a bit in a situation like this. So what I do is play a little thin cannon off the, the opponent's white onto the right hand side of the red, then move around that side, play another cannon back off the red and knock it back into the box, like this. Now I'd come right around this side, play a thin contact onto the red and, and simply knock the white ball right back behind the spot. Then I can pop the red ball in this pocket and I've got my top of the table again. Over there ready to play a cannon. Now this is another little variation. Instead of playing a little thin cannon there, knock the red towards the spot, I'll play what I call a feather cannon, drive my opponent's ball onto the cushion there, bring it up behind the red, and I'll just go across and feather the red with my cue ball. We'll go through it again and just feather the red on the other side. There's perfect position on the other side. Just go through here now, and I've got top of the table all I've got to do is dribble that red ball in the pocket there and there's perfect position. This is another variation. Uh, I could play in off that red, which is not quite on the natural angle, but the white ball is out of the box and in a very awkward situation. So I'm going to play a kiss cannon. It's more than a kiss cannon, it's a double kiss cannon. I play, uh, I contact this ball about a half ball, and it kisses my white for the second time and knocks it on the right-hand side of the red ball. Leaving a perfect position for top of the table. All I've got to do now is just pop that red ball through in that position there, and there's absolutely perfect position. Now, this is what we call a little slip-through cannon. Uh, in this particular case, just where the balls are lying, I'm going to play it off the white ball and then just touch the red ball and slip through on the other side without losing position. I just feathered the red and now I've got a pot in this pocket, made it perfect, see? But you can vary the position just depending on where the balls are. Now, in this particular case now, I would play it the opposite way, I'd play it off the red ball and go over there and I'd still have that pot on there. It just depends on where they are and I'd play this pot here. Now I'll pop the red and then get a cannon off the white next shot. Now in, a, in this position here, I'm going to play a thin cannon off the red ball, pushing the red ball along towards the pocket, clipping the white ball on the, on the side here, on the right hand side, and knocking it probably just out of the box. Next shot, I'll pop that red ball and try to get on the natural angle there. 
Then the next shot I'll be playing in off the red here, and because the white ball is on just outside the box, I'll be knocking the red ball off the side cushion. I'll explain that in a moment. First of all, though, I'll play this shot, and I'll bring my white ball back so that I can get that pot on every time. And I'll just pop this red ball and get on that natural angle. Now, as you can see now, I'm right on that natural angle. So a losing hazard player would like to go in off that ball and drive it up to the centre pocket so they could go in off. Now, I'm, uh, I'm a top of the table player, so I want to bring that white ball back into play, and I'm going to just knock the red ball off the side cushion after going in off it and play a drop cannon to bring the, this white ball back and double the red off that side cushion over this pocket. As you can see, my last shot, it brought that red ball out a little bit far. I would have likened it to have been about down there for, for this drop cannon, but wherever they go, you've still got to play your shot. Now, so this drop cannon, from where it is, I'm going to play it fairly thick, about three-quarter ball into the red, to drive the red ball onto the cushion and back over towards that pocket, and taking a pace off my ball so that when it strikes the white ball, it shouldn't shift it too far. By playing that drop cannon onto that left-hand side of the white, it drove it into the box, and the red ball came off this cushion right over the pocket where it is, in perfect position. But because it is straight on, what I intend doing now is potting the red ball and sticking on it so that I'll be on that natural angle. Instead of trying to pot it and come over here for position, I'll stop on the angle, going off the red ball in this pocket next shot, knock it over the centre pocket, pot it and come back, and I've scored nine in the process. Uh, now you can see where, where the balls have finished up after playing this drop cannon. I played off the red on the uh, right hand side of the red, fairly thick, to drive the red onto the cushion, across over that pocket, and then knock the white ball, which was here, into the box, and now this is the position we're faced with. What I'm going to do now is try to hit my ball or strike my ball at 6 o'clock and stick right on that spot where the red is, pocket the red, go in off the red next shot, knock it over the middle pocket, pot it and come back. If I can stop right on that natural angle, it's going to make this very easy and I'll score 9 in the process and I should come back down here somewhere for the top of the table. That's one shot. Now, I'm a little bit off the angle, so I'm going to play this with a little bit of running side. I haven't got the red quite high enough, so I'll have to play a drop cannon again now. Now I'll play that shot just right but a little bit too hard, otherwise the white ball would have finished around here. So now I'm going to pop the red ball and go on the other side there so that I can get a cannon and bring that white ball back into play. Now as you can see the position there, now all that has been caused by that bad end off I played and didn't get the red quite high enough to put it in the middle pocket. So I had to play a drop cannon. I played a little bit too uh, thin on the red, not thick enough. If I had played the, the red a little bit fuller, 
uh, I would have taken the face off my cue ball so that when it contacted the white, it didn't shift it as far as it has. But now that it's here, I still want to get it back into that box and it's a little bit of a, a narrow cannon, so I'm going to use right hand side, striking my ball here at three o'clock, but taking the white ball off the cushion back into the box. Now, as you can see, I've played it again a little bit too hard, and I'm very close to the spot, so what I'm going to do now is pop that red ball there and come back here a little bit so that I can get a cannon off the red ball. I just got the cannon there, just tipped it, and missed the pot. So now I'm going to cut the red ball in, and I've still got good position. Now this time I'm going to play the cannon off the white first. Now I'm pretty very close to the spot, but I pot the red, and now I can pot the red, make two pots. A lot of top of the table, you can play two two pots to every cannon, which I'm going to do now. Place the red ball back on the spot again, and you can see the perfect position that I've got. Now, that little segment that I've just played, I got out of position a few times. Things didn't work out quite the way I wanted them, but you don't despair, you just keep uh, playing on. You can't always get absolutely perfect position. But I would show you now, with the ball's in this position, and you've got the white ball there, and slightly, that side of the center. So you do a lot of potting uh, of the red. Red counts three. You can get two pots to every cannon. In this case, I will strike my ball down the bottom and draw it back a few inches, pot the red, and get the cannon next shot. Perfect position. Now a little cannon next shot. without shifting the white very far. Now there's quite a lot of potting in, in bridges and uh, particularly at top of the table. You just keep brushing that white. In this case, I pot the red again, get another three. Then just dribble the red through and just touch the white again. Another cannon with left hand side now. I strike my ball here at 10 o'clock, follow through, and bring it off the cushion. Now play a little cannon here, dribble it towards the spot. You still haven't shifted the white very far. Now I'll play a cannon and strike my ball here about 10 o'clock. Follow through, bring it back off the cushion for a position for your cannon there. Another cannon and just dribble the red towards the spot. Now this time I can either stop on that Play the angle shot again, up to the centre, pop the red and come back, or come off for here. Now, I think it's best to play this shot and stay right on the angle. Get off, you strike that ball at 6 o'clock, firmly, bang, and you'll stop your ball dead, and it's in perfect position. Put the red on the spot, now I'll play the in off, and drive the red over the centre pocket. Always place your, in, in this particular position, place your ball so that your, the white ball, your, your ball will finish about halfway from the centre to the cushion. And play it down the table, strike, strike the cushion, 
and come back again. It's far better for it to come back too far this way and to finish up down here in an awkward position where you haven't got an angle shot. You've got to pop that root and go up too far. It's far better to come back like that because now I can get a cannon off the cushion with a little bit of right hand side, striking my ball here at three o'clock, dribbling the red towards the cushion and come like that. Because I know the next shot now I can pop the red, go over here, play a cannon back off the white, and bring it back into the box in a position like that. I'm just going to show you this once again, that if you're wanting to play the floating white, and you want to keep the white ball back somewhere close to the spot, in a position like this, you just play that red about a quarter ball, just dribble it towards the pocket, and with enough strength, play off the cushion here, with right hand side on your own ball, striking your ball at three o'clock, and it comes off the cushion. Now, depending on how much side you put on that ball, it depends on where you're going to strike that white. If you put not very much side, you'll strike the white here and push it over there. If you want to bring it back close behind the spot, you put more side on so you strike it back there and brings it back towards the spot. Now, we just play it like this. The thing is that what you mustn't do, or try not to do, is knock that ball out of the box. It's quite all right where it is, because the red is in perfect position, because I played it thin, dribbled it towards the, that spot, uh, towards the pocket, I mean. Now I'm going to put that red and go around here where I've made the cross back up here, and then I can play it back into the box again. Now from this position where I've just finished, I'm going to, uh, or if I want to bring that white back closer to the spot behind it, I play a little thin on the, on the white to drive it to the cushion and bring it back here, and then the red ball must go towards the pocket. Now I've played a, an extremely bad shot here, so what I'll have to do is try to get that white ball off that. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to, I could pop that red and go in off the white, but I want to get the top of the table back again. So I'm going to pop that red and put a lot of side on my ball so that I'll be in a position when the red comes up on this spot. Now it comes back up onto this spot because it won't spot there. So I'll put it back on the spot, and now I can play this cannon and knock it off the spot. Play it thick onto the red and knock it off the spot, and there I've got top of the table again. Now what I've done here, I showed you what I would do because the white is just off the spot there, and I want to play top of the table all the time. I played that red through there and finished up over here. Then I played a cannon off the red because the red must always go back from the pyramid spot when the red spot is occupied. So the red goes there, I played the cannon and knocked the white off the spot, the red over that pocket and carried on with the break. Now there's an alternative here. I put the ball back where they were. I could pop that red softly and just come out practically where the red ball is because the white ball is not quite on the spot. But the next shot I would play in off the white here, drive it onto the cushion out here, where I can get in off from Bork. The following shot, uh, now I'd play in off that, the red ball would be here, play in off there, then I'd be back in hand with the white ball here, my opponent's white, red on the spot. I would play it off the red in this pocket, to take it over that centre pocket. Because once I play, uh, I'm back in hand there, I can play it off that white, drop it down into the box, 
plot the red if it's up high enough, but you don't have to worry too much about that in off when the red there, because if it doesn't go to the centre pocket, I drop that white ball down there and play a drop cannon to bring it back into play. So there's no problems, no worry, but that's an alternative that you can play. As, as I've explained to you in several of the sequences that we've been doing, uh, trying to get what you call perfect position uh, is not always easy. In fact, uh, uh, it's hard to say that you get perfect position for anywhere, but you try to get the, your opponent's white ball in that box for top of the table. And believe me, if you strive to do that, uh, all the time you'll find that your billiards will improve and particularly your average. Uh, I would say to all players, keep an average. When you're playing a game, mark up every shot on the scoreboard so that at the end of a given time you've scored so many points in a given number of shots. This is the only way that you'll find that you are improving at billiards. You can keep improving for a lifetime. But you'll find at the end of six months that instead of averaging um, 12, we'll say, you're now averaging 15, which uh, shows you that you're improving and gives you heart to play on. But what you do do, there's always an alternative. If, uh, if your position doesn't work out perfect for you, because the, who's perfect? There's no one perfect, not even Walter. Uh, but... You, you strive to, for the alternative shot to get back to the top of the table. I use quite a lot of drop cannons. It, I always reckon that between the centre pocket here and, and the, the, the top pocket, anywhere in this zone, uh, and you're in hand, there's a white uh, uh, a ball here, either the red or the white, in that area, it's out of play while you're in hand. So you always drop the other ball down from the centre when you get the opportunity to bring it back into play. By the same token, here's a position where I've got an easy in off the white in the centre pocket. But the red ball is out of play from hand unless you're an extremely good pot. So what I always do in this particular case, instead of playing that in off the white, and dropping it down to the cushion and then playing a cannon off the red, which you can do, you've got to drag the ball, play it softly to get your position. Whereas by playing it from Bork here, uh, onto the white ball, then onto the red, striking the re red ball on the left-hand side, and the white ball strikes the side cushion and across towards the D. And you can get top of the table in one shot. Now, from this position here, when I'm in the hand, the red ball is out of play there. Now, it's quite possible to come play from here, in off the white, drop the white ball down just on the right hand of the spot, and then play a soft cannon down off the red ball onto the white, leaving the red ball over the pocket. But I feel that this is a better shot, playing from hand here, and playing a drop cannon, uh, full onto the white, about three-quarter ball, and getting onto the left-hand side of the red, playing it towards the pocket. The red should come, the white should come down towards the spot there. There it is there, perfect. I need the long shot, but I can play a pot the red there, back, the white's near the spot, and I'm in business straight away, play top of the table. Now we're playing this shot once again uh, to give you an idea of exactly where I'm striking my uh, cue ball here. I'm striking it right here about 10 o'clock and, and striking the you know, opponent's white fairly thick, a little bit to the right, about three-quarter ball, so that the white ball will contact the cushion there across into the box around the spot a cannon onto the left-hand side of the red, leaving it in a position over that pocket. We're playing this shot once again to let you see exactly where I'm striking the ball 
and the, the result. Now what's happened there, I've got on the wrong side of the red and I can be in play by just playing a little thin cannon and I've still got top of the table. Now you, you saw me play that drop cannon and I've got on the wrong side of the red but by playing a thin cannon through it still turned out all right. Now from here I can bring that white ball out a bit and knock the red over there because now I've got the white ball out, it gives you a bigger margin. Now I can play a little thin pot there. The red on the spot. I stun pot that and go over there, cannon back off the cushion, and that gives us position again. Now, striking my ball down a little bit to stun it over there into position. The red ball back onto the spot and now I come off the top cushion, dribble the red towards the spot and never be frightened of knocking them up a little bit. Now all I've got to do is pop that red ball and go just there, simple shot, then another cannon off the white and I've got them back in the box and so it goes on. And this is the top of the table. But never despair, there's always a shot on. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we've come to the end of the video. Uh, as you all know, there are thousands of shots in billiards, but you can't possibly play them all in one video. Uh, we've deliberately cut the video uh, to a reasonable length because we didn't want to bore people with it. Uh, all we wanted to do was to get that message through to try to help all the players from... Uh, the weaker players to the stronger players. I'm quite sure that you will all get some benefit from this video, but uh, before going on further, I would like to thank a number of people associated with this video. First of all, uh, the Henson boys, uh, Arthur and Max Henson, who trade under the name of R. Max Billiards. Uh, I've known these boys all my life. In fact, I knew their parents before they were married. So that will give you some idea in the length of time I've known them. But they uh, have done a wonderful job with billiards. They started off from furniture manufacturers, and since they've come into the billiards game, they've gradually improved until now their product is second to none. They're doing a wonderful job. I wish them well. I thank them very much for helping us with the video. I would like to thank, too, the, the cameraman, uh, Neil Roper. Neil has done a tremendous job with one camera to get the various angles and shots that we've played. It admittedly has taken quite a long time. It's taken us several days. But Neil's done a tremendous job, and I thank him very much. I would like to thank Polly. Uh, Polly has helped us tremendously with this video. Um, in fact, uh, I don't know how we'd have done it without him. He's done a wonderful job. Thanks very much, Polly. There are two other people that uh, I should have mentioned there that want to remain anonymous. Uh, I thank them very much for their support for making the video. I'd also like to thank my good wife, who has been putting up with us for several days here uh, to make this video. I thank her most sincerely. Uh, at this stage, I would like to draw attention to this photo that is put here of Walter and I. Uh, Walter was my mentor, and uh, he, what a wonderful player he's been. And this photo was... Walter and I meeting back in 1936 when Walter uh, reminded me this was the first world title that I'd won, reminded me that we were now both the world's professional and the world's amateur champions and we were both born in Kalgoorlie. That, uh, the odds against that would be thousands to one against. But uh, in going back, 
over the video a little bit. Uh, the, the sponsors and myself hope that everyone gets the benefit out of the video that we have, we have been expecting. Uh, I have deliberately shown top of the table, played very openly, so that any players, no matter how poor they are at the start, have got something to strive for instead of like the pros play that white ball very close to that red spot. It's not necessary. You can still make hundreds of breaks uh, with playing the open uh, top of the table, floating wide and postman's knock. So we, we hope that everyone gets some benefit from it and you've got something to practice for. And if I could make a thousand break or, or made three uh, playing this type of billiards, I'm quite sure that you can do the same. I wish you well. Uh, happy billiards.
Some little time ago, the season was a rainy one and things were precious slow. So just to kill down care and time at billiards we would play. Three other daughters and myself throughout the live long day. Oh, the game of billiards, what a game is billiards. I never thought it had a charm before. Messrs. Cook and Bennett, much had I to thank you. Oh, the little girl who I adore. A host, one lovely daughter had who dearly loved the game. Sometimes she'd join us with the cue and set our hearts aflame. She'd oft with winning grace declare while watching us at play that he who proved himself the best would win her heart some day. Oh, the game of billiards, what a game is billiards. I never thought it had a charm before. Messrs. Cook and Bennett, much have I to thank you for the little girl whom I Each of us had in his turn proposed to wear this little maiden fair who feigned to be opposed, till she at last with firm resolve gave us to understand that he who at her game scored most might claim her heart and hand. 